Okay, wait, welcome to this time lapse of uh, this woman with flowers. It is, here you can see, I actually painted one face, but I then turned it around because I didn't think it came out right. So I started all over again. Um, as you see, I start usually with, uh, or I always start with the white or the, the light, and I also use uh, the darkened. Uh, canvas as uh, as shadows as you can see I just first let them stand I go in between build up the light and then I fill in the rest of the body after that now people are asking me to create shorter videos and the thing is that my painting process is so long and it takes so many hours that it's hard for me to get it down to shorter videos. I could try maybe make two versions, a short one, a long one. But also I think this is a good way to do it because I can here make a time lapse that lasts, this will last about 15 minutes and I can talk you through the process. As you can see here, uh, I have built more detail and I just keep on adding now I use, I also, the reason why I start with a darkened canvas is actually a wash with, uh, with uh, raw umber. Usually I like to use the raw umber from uh, Vincent Newton because it has a more uh, kind of neutral uh, greenish tone but also like the one from Michael Harding uh, when it comes to the painting process I uh, use um, old Holland colors and um, also of course the Rohumbar but for some reason I like the, the <clears throat> to tone the canvas I like to use the Rohumbar from from Vincent Newton for some reason it has to do with the tone the more neutral the tone is the easier it is to work with it. As you can see, I just keep on building more and more detail. And this painting was actually quite a grueling process because there's a there's a blue in the photo I'm painting from that is basically almost impossible to create with all oil colors. For some reason, it is probably the chemistry of the print uh, ink compared to the, um, the oil paint, that is the difference. It is in the Prussian blue zone. I, <clears throat> when I paint, I actually use uh, Prussian blue, French ultramarine and uh, ordinary cobalt as my basis blue colors. And I also use all the the, uh, the three uh, primary colors that is red, green, no, not red, yellow, and of course blue. And from them, I don't have a green color on my palette. I mix uh, all the colors together as I go along. So here you see, I started with more and more detail. One thing I also figured out is that I should be a little bit more careful to build textures in the beginning. In these paintings because sometimes I have to rearrange everything and if I build too much texture I have to basically fight with the texture that doesn't have the right address as I like to call it. Here you can actually see a segment of me using the palette uh, I talk about in, in the main video. In the main video I have actually also put in, uh, in different um, hyperlinks in description so you can actually drug jump through the different segments of the video uh, it's a very good thing because uh, my this video is actually over 10 hours long and the reason it became this long is basically because i couldn't get it right and i was fighting and fighting and fighting but in the end it came out quite nice i'm in that lucky position that i have a very I have a brain that still at the age of 51 learns as a child so I still every every single painting for me is basically a learning process 
it is like going back to kindergarten and or back into the woods as a little boy and finding all these things the strange branches and the strange animals and and you know sitting around and uh, looking at saving uh, saving insects from drowning death uh, in ponds and stuff you know I, I did all kinds of shit when I was a child I was uh, yeah and painting for me is basically going back to some sort of childhood flow where I can solve problems and get some peace of mind one of the reasons why I I think people should paint is of course most art, artsy types do have some issues with maybe ADHD or some bipolar issues and stuff like that and if you have that kind of issues painting and flow in all its forms are really the way to go uh, if you can find your flow it's a life savior and for me it became painting uh, and here you see, you see, it's just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And I just trying to correct myself over and over and over and over and over again. It's almost like a puzzle. I try to get all the, the bricks to fit in. And as I go along, I just co coming closer and closer and closer and closer to that goal. <clears throat> uh, the face was basically a good sketch from the start usually I do huge paintings or much bigger paintings but lately I've started to make these small ones and I enjoy it immensely actually to a point where I I want to specialize in all sizes and also of course all types of painting as you have seen on my you can see on my youtube channel I also paint a lot of um, objects i love painting everything from craniums to apples and pears and and i also do landscapes because landscapes gives even more freedom because landscapes are kind of a little bit more relative if you are painting a face or a body we are our brains are tuned to see mistakes and stuff like that so uh, if you paint landscape, I don't say that you're going to do a sloppy job, but you have more freedom to um, experiment more with with brushwork and stuff like that. So I also recommend that you do some some landscapes from photo or from real life or whatever. That would be a very good idea. You see, I go, I, I tend to I darken the shadows and then I go over it again with lighter color and I kind of darken it and I also work a lot of wet in wet if you can put in like 10 hours in a painting or 8 hours stretch in a painting you can basically cover the whole painting and when you do that you are able to go into wet and wet and what you can do then is that you are basically adding colors into the wet paint and it gives you the possibility to work with the paint in a more clay-like way and that is also why i love the old holland paint because they have a constituency of of what what clay would have had so uh, that's why i recommend that that paint there's also a lot of um, pigment in it it's not much filler so you get a lot of pigment for the money uh, and uh, since it's quite expensive you also want to avoid that it dries on the palette and you're throwing it away see i'm going back and forth and in the main video you have segments of all these things 20 minute segments 15 10 maybe and up to 30 uh, 30 um, minutes segments where i talk about what i do and of course I talk and talk and talk so I also talk about things that concerns me it can be my own uh, shortcomings it can be about the world it can be about religion it can be about politics it can be about existence in itself which I find extremely important 
that is why I also will start doing a little bit more, not necessarily political stuff, but things that matters compared to what I'm interested in when it comes to the human condition. I'm actually planning this huge exhibition called The Human Condition and I'm also planning to make a book out of it and then uh, write an essay to every topic that I'm painting and it's going to be from the worst of the worst of human nature to the best of human nature. If you saw that there, I was actually in there with a knife and in one of the segments I'm actually scraping it down all the all the textures that was too much because I had built so much that I just needed to go in with a knife and just cut away all the excess color that was disturbing the process. It's quite an ex uh, interesting segment actually. I haven't done that in that way before. It was quite brutal. So you can go to the main video and, and see that happen. Uh, you find a link in description in the hyperlinks to that. As you see now, I'm going over it again. And more and more, more and more, I'm getting closer to that uh, feeling of a brick wall or of a plaster wall. It's actually from my old studio. This I took these, uh, I took photos of her with a tungsten film, a Diaz film, tungsten film with my 67RC camera which I love it has this handle and it's heavy it weighs a ton and it's uh, just great to work with now you can actually see it becoming more and more clear and what is fascinating to me is when I do this I'm getting a little bit closer to what Vermeer did in his small paintings I always thought that oh why didn't he paint them bigger and doing these small ones myself I'm starting to realize that Things doesn't have to be that big to be good. I'm not saying I have a long way to go as a painter to what I would consider good. Uh, and I say always say I really like love that people like my paintings more than I do because I'm quite ruthless with myself when it comes to my my paintings. Uh, and that is the way I learned because I never actually had a classical education. I was a welder in the shipyard and I just started this when I was like 21, 22 years old. And I painted and drawed like a 10 year old. I could nothing. But when I started, I just found my flow. It was the thing that calmed down my brain. And I stuck with it now for 30 years. And I hope I'm going to do it for another 50 until I leave existence and in that time I may have been able to with now me getting more peace of mind and I'm calming down as a person I'm not that hyper anymore that I'm going to be able to reach at least 70 to 80 percent of my goals as a painter and if I can do that I will die a good death and I will feel that I spent this time in existence in a good way and in a way doing art and doing stuff and finding the flow and finding meaning in life in creative work i will say that that is the should be the main goal to create a good death and with that i mean feeling that you spent your life doing something constructive with it so that is my advice to you especially if you're a young artist don't throw it away on drink and the wrong girls or wrong relationships or whatever stick with it do it and do it again and again now if you want to support my channel you can do that by going to patreon and becoming a patron i do a small uh, kind of a giveaway every month a small painting that i give away to one patron for five dollars so but you can do anything you can do one you can do 10 or 20 or 50 so please check it out and i see you in the next video